Well, greetings to you, scalawags, ne'er-do-wells, and curmudgeons alike, and I suppose the rest of y'all, too. This evening, I will be drinking, and I swear I will be enjoying, the Cherries Jubal Ale by Deschutes. In case you weren't familiar, the Jubal Ale is a winter warmer, holiday spiced ale made by Deschutes Brewing every year. I used to be an idiot, well, I'm still an idiot, um, but I called it the Jubal Alley for whatever reason. I, 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 I knew about the beer for like three years before I realized it was Jubal Ale, as in jubilant, celebration, celebration ale. It's literally a celebration beer. I took far too long to realize that it, yeah, that that's what it was. Anyways, I do now know that's how it's pronounced, the Jubal Ale. Um, I didn't have to read anything to learn about that. I can't remember if someone pointed it out to me or if I realized it myself, but it wasn't a book or a label or a document of any sort. Um, Anyways, traditionally the Jubal Ale is just a spiced holiday brown or winter warmer ale. Um, This is a special Cherries Jubal Ale, which when I saw saw on the shelf uh, a month ago, I was quite excited to see. Uh, Deschutes makes several really good standard beers. Black Butte Porter is a a super great, super well-respected, just well-executed, consistent porter beer. Um, There's a couple others that I would probably recognize. But I think if you're talking about Deschutes Brewing and wide distribution, you're probably talking about the Black Butte Porter, obviously another dark ale. So that does to seem does seem to me, based on my own memory, what they might specialize in is the darker ales, but I'm probably wrong on that. Anyways, let's uh, pour this and see what it's all about. Being a winter warmer, I'm expecting this to be a higher ABV, um, less focused on the hops, a dark ale, uh, and definitely it is dark. It's uh, perhaps just to the light side of coffee. The head is cream colored. It's actually a relatively dark head and uh, a bit rocky, but it's also thin and goes away pretty quickly. The beer itself has some body to it. As you can see, it hangs out on the sides there pretty well. Hmm. So I'm not picking up like a bright, fresh cherry smell right off the outset. I'm more picking up um, maybe a darker cherry juice. And it might just be the the type of cherries that that, that they used. Um, And it's definitely not a a maraschino or a candied cherry. It's more of a, a real cherry. But towards the end of the growing season, when they're dark and luscious, that kind of smell. Together with the really nice, just the kind of malty, mild spiciness that is traditional to the the Jubal Ale and the winter warmer style in general. It smells like a good beer. Um, No off off smells, nothing smelling funky or weird or questionable. Um, Funky in a bad way. (laughs) It smells good. It smells interesting. It smells as though it will taste of like cherry juice and a good cherry juice. Not those, you know, where the first ingredient is apple juice, you know, from condensate. <laughs> Let's dive in and see if it tastes as good as as good as it smells. Oh heck yeah. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. Ooh, interesting. So there are three, possibly four distinct um, flavor levels. And the first thing you smell is cherry. I think that's where it's going to be three. Because there's a redo, redux. It, it, it comes back. It comes again. Um, cherry. Then um, a coffee starts building. Kind of a, a dry coffee. Uh, but mild and very nicely balanced. Then chocolate, and it's a a milk chocolate. 
but a good strong milk chocolate, then cherry again. And that's really good. Now this beer is still pretty cold. I just pulled it out of the fridge a few minutes ago. Being a winter warmer, I would expect that as it warms, the cherry is probably gonna become more dominant. <clears throat> um, but as it currently is, uh, the, the it's more subtle, the, the chocolates and the coffees, which are definitely the second fiddle flavors, are, are definitely present. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all are cherry cordial fans. I am, I like cherry cordials. Uh, that's the, the cherry in a, like a cherry liqueur in a hard chocolate shell and you bite into it and it's a, impossible to eat neatly because it gushes all over the place and it's just too big for a mouthful. Um, so this is almost like drinking a cherry cordial. And that makes me super happy inside. Yeah, they went all in on cherries. The cherries are no lie. That is good stuff. Plus, what well, kind of plus? On a, an interesting aside, reading this bottle, it says it's bottle conditioned for quality. Great, bottle conditioning is a good thing for craft brewers to do. Bottle conditioning involves um, after you have bottled the beer, you drop a small amount of sometimes additional sugars, but additionally yeast into the bottle. And then the yeast in the bottle actually develops the head, <clears throat> excuse me, actually develops the head on the beer. They don't have to carbonate it. It's actually the yeasts, uh, you know, off gases that, that are the head on the beer and it allows the beer to age. It is the yeast continuing to work on the beer that allows a beer to be aged. That is placed in a uh, temperate uh, storage place out of light and allowed to develop. It's just the, the yeast continuing to work on the sugars in the beer. <clears throat> Sorry. That is why, typically speaking, as a beer ages, it becomes less sweet. They tend to dry out a bit because that yeast has eaten more of the sugar in the beer and the flavors change, you know, more of the yeast's results. Your ABV is probably gonna go up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a whole bunch of very nice chemical and biological uh, uh, reactions occur over the aging period of the beer. So. This beer is a 9% ABV right now. It's in its, its bottling weight. But considering they added live yeast to bottle condition this, and then they go even further. The live yeast added to this bottle allows this beer to age gracefully. Ooh. I, I've aged quite a few beers. I enjoy it quite a lot. Um, more traditionally, you will age dark beers, stouts, there is usually super special releases of some super stout that you put in a cupboard and let sit for <laughs> as long as you want. Uh, the really good ones, 10, 15, even 20 years easily. Um, I've aged up to five years, but I've aged mostly Saison's wild beers, which go to the far end of sour as they age, but on the uh, on the path to that, they pass through some really interesting and tasty stages within two to three years. Anyways, um, barrel or aging a cherry jubal ale sounds like an excellent idea. Um, and next time I see these things on the store cupboard, I do plan to buy a few more and uh, stick them in my cupboard just because, you know, why not? Anyways, this has been. Cherry's Jubal Ale by Deschutes Brewing. I'm Matthew. I've been chewing the brew, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>